as we started into remote learning, lots of teachers had lots of questions and we were trying to put together plans kind of all at the last minute and trying to make the most of the situation and make it the best that we could for our students. And so as we're all still trying to assemble our plans, one of the big questions is, what does it look like? It's always interesting to get to peer into somebody else's classroom and see what they're doing and see some of their examples. And boy, have I got a good example for you. The person I'm going to be talking about is so modest, she probably wouldn't toot her own horn about this, but that's why we're going to toot it for her. So um, we're going to be taking a look into Rachel Marker's sixth grade class and see some of the innovations that she's been doing in remote learning. I tell you what, she has got a plan that really addresses lots of the needs, lots of the different needs of her students. And whether you teach younger grades or older grades or in the middle, there's going to be a lot for everybody in this one. And so I am super, super excited to introduce you to her. So if you're joining us in this video, first of all, um, if you're live, welcome. We're so glad to see you as we're recording this. And um, if you get a chance, go ahead and drop a comment into the chat and let us know your name, where you're from and what you do so that we can address you a little more properly as we go. If you're watching watching this on the replay. If you found this on YouTube or Facebook or whatever, welcome. We're going to have lots and lots of ideas for you to see. And so we're going to be talking today to Rachel Marker, who is right over here to my right. I'm getting better at this because I have to point with my left hand. It takes a little thinking, but um, yeah, nice. That was good. See, she didn't even have to practice it. Um, so anyway, uh, Rachel, can you tell everyone just a little bit about who you are and what you do? Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm honored that you're all here and uh, excited to share what I've been learning with you. Um, I'm a sixth grade teacher in Bozeman, Montana. I teach ELA, so English language arts, which is reading, writing, speaking and listening, all that good stuff, and social studies. And I'm also a health enhancement teacher. I teach uh, gym. So I'm part of a two-person teaching team at our middle school. And the, the two of us together share the five major content areas and Jim is one of them. Excellent, very good. And it looks like maybe we've got several people that are uh, here. So I'm kind of throwing some of your names up here on the screen. And Rachel, it looks like you brought along some familiar faces as well. Oh, I do see one. Hi, Kelly Hayden. That's right, who says that she's also from <laughs> Bozeman, Montana too, so. All right, very good. Well, um, I know I've got a ton of questions to ask Rachel that I think will be helpful to everybody. If you're in the live video, please do drop any questions that you have in, or if there's something we talk about, or if there's a question that I ask and you have an idea to share, please go ahead and share that. And I know Rachel's got lots of slides that I'm gonna be throwing up on the screen as well. So um, all good stuff. But as we get started into this, um, Rachel, I wondered if you could take us back to when this whole remote learning thing first hit, you know, the news is coming out mm -hmm. about the, the global pandemic and about how it's going to affect schools. And there was the threat of closing schools in the midst of all of it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, as that all started to unfold, my guess is you were probably just like everybody else, trying to put a plan in place, trying to figure out what your priorities were. And so I wonder for you, as you got into this, what were some of those priorities? What were some of those things that you wanted to make sure that, that you and your students did? Yeah, great question. Um, so I would say, I think when everything was really uh, coming together and states across the country were realizing that their district might be closing down, right around that time, we were actually on spring break. And so that did, I felt like that was a little bit of a gift. It gave me some time to think through what I was going to prioritize. And then our district then gave us after spring break, those five days once we returned to really think that through. So that was another um, real blessing just as far as having some time to be intentional. And what I found rising to the surface for me was at least in the first week and maybe two weeks was really focusing on the social emotional learning. So, um, you know, suddenly, I mean, and, and my situation is not unique to really anyone else's across the country, we were suddenly thrown into this new reality of needing to um, do remote learning and not really knowing what tools our kids might have at home, what supports they might need, whether that's technology or Wi-Fi or just like what kind of parental and adult support they had or didn't have at home. So I decided to really focus on that social emotional piece um, to 
kind of uncover some of those things, uh, really do some te team building things through things like Flipgrid, some really kind of low hanging fruit, um, nothing that would be assessed, things that kids would have hopefully have fun doing so mm -hmm. that uh, they could just kind of connect with each other and connect with me and, and kind of through that process, I could see who wasn't jumping online and who I wasn't reaching because yeah. that was gonna help me determine once we got to the academic pieces, what I needed to do to do to reach those kids. Yeah, I, I so love that that focus of making sure using some of this stuff to make sure that everybody has access, but also yeah. to make sure that everybody's okay. Because, you know, that's one of the things that I think surprised me the most about all of this is how much it threw everybody's routines into flux. It removed a lot of the social component of schools. And, you know, mm -hmm. I think that's something that we take it take for granted in the day to day, every single day of school is that kids get to see their friends and they get to see their teachers and they get to socialize and they learn a lot through that as far as how to interact with people. And then if you're not intentional about replace, we can't really replace it, but if you're not intentional about addressing that, at mm -hmm. least that's something that that's really lost. And um, Rachel shared some slides with me that I wanted to um, put up here on the screen real quick. And these were, Hi everyone, I don't know if you can hear me, and Matt, I apologize if I'm interrupting you, but I seem to be having a frozen screen issue. Uh, Matt, I'm gonna give you a call on your cell phone. Sorry, my screen froze. Oh, that's okay, I didn't know if it was you or me. Okay. I'm here. I'm I'm on. I think <laughs> Matt froze. Okay, so Holly, Holly's telling us she can hear us, but that you're frozen. It was right when you started sharing your screen. Yes, it was. That's right. Okay, am I back? Well, now there are two of you. So now I I see uh like the okay. frozen the frozen Matt. There we go. There we go. And we're gonna try this again. Okay. Sorry, folks, if you're watching this at home. Um, what happened was I tried to share her slides and for some strange reason, it just locked up my screen. I don't know what was going on here, but um, I'm going to try it one more time. Let's hope that it doesn't lock up again. Aha, there we go. Perfect. Okay. So thank you so much for your patience as we go through this. But these are some of the things that I saw that really impressed me. So um, anything that you haven't touched on, Rachel, that, um, that, that was on this slide that, that you want to elaborate on? Um, I guess maybe just that last point of, and, and really this was my focus for the first week or two, as I know it was the focus for so many teachers. So I don't think this is unique to me, but that last point of uncovering inequities and I wrote tech inequities, so it, but it wasn't just the technology. I mean, there were a handful of students who I was worried about just having their basic needs met and were parents going to be home? or any yeah. adult and just kind of feeling that out. So it, it just felt like the right thing to do to, to focus on the social emotional piece. And, and by doing that, not being explicit about that, just creating some fun activities, some mm -hmm. choice boards and, uh, and kind of through the, the kids participation, I was able to see which kids I thought I would probably need to um, really reach out to and connect with families before yeah. I expected any kind of academic assignments to be turned in. So it was yeah. helpful. Yeah. Um, by the way, it looks like we're we're keeping it real here with Heidi. She's like, makes me feel so normal. This just happened during class today. So I know. We're it's not like the our only new ones. reality. Yeah. 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 Exactly. That's right. So um I like this from from Yvonne. She says, good point about tech and equity, but also vulnerable children not having a safe environment or other basic needs met. It's like these are some of the things that kids have to deal with whenever they're at home, but when they're at school, it's like we can start to control for that a little bit. But then when they're at home all the time, all of this stuff really, you know, really comes to the forefront, doesn't it? Absolutely. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. So what I'd love to do also is um, start to take a look at some of the academic tasks. No, before the academic tasks, um, you've been using Mentimeter, right, to mm -hmm. connect with students and to help them to respond to some of those prompts. So I wondered if you could tell us a little bit about Mentimeter. And we're going to put the link to Mentimeter, which I think is just Mentimeter.com, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So um, I've, I've only used it two or three times, and it was for mm -hmm. questions like the one you're seeing right now. So um, in that first week after we came back from spring break and teachers had some time to create plans for the official start of school, I pushed this out to my team um, just in kind of like a fun, I think I mentioned having a choice board. It was one of their options. So it was just like, hey, how have you helped a family member this week? And it was just um, an easy window into just a small chunk of what life was looking looking like at home. So the first two on the top, on the left and in the middle, was my co-teacher and I just sharing some ways that we've been helping our family. So I felt like mm -hmm. I'd been doing a ton of laundry and just keeping things light. And then, you know, if you look at the kids' comments, it was mostly uh, helping siblings or helping make dinner or doing dishes. Mm -hmm. So just, again, kind of like that keeping it light. Um, the other example that you, that you then went to, Matt was uh, that's for this week. And it's what I learned in the first two weeks of doing this online remote schooling was that some of the kids are flying through activities and lessons for other kids. They're not completing nearly half of it, but for the kids who right. needed a little bit more, this was part of this um, not really enrichment, but just kind of like, Hey, here are some optional things that if you want to do. So this question of whether you'd want to explore outer space or the bottom of the deepest ocean, just, I mean, it is not really tied to anything academic, but it is just a way for kids to share something different and to connect online in a new way. And Mentimeter, I really like for that free form response. Um, it also, it has all kinds of other options. And one of the other options that I love is a word cloud. So we've used it in class before when we're just brainstorming something. I think we did it for constructing our um, our classroom norms. And so the kids can just populate it with their ideas for a word cloud. And then the more times things are mentioned, you know, the bigger the words get bigger. And so it has lots of great features that I think are fun and super easy. The kids don't need an account. There's no FERPA, COPA issue. So that's nice. Yeah. Nice. There was a quick question here. Do you give them the re the week to respond? Like you, how much time yeah. do you give them to respond? Yeah, for both of those. So I've been setting up all of my assignments to span about uh, five or six school days. And our first week back was kind of an odd three day week because we had this planned professional development. And then it was an actual day off for middle school teachers because of something in the fall. So it went from one week kind of into another and they just responded at their own pace. And not all of them yeah. did. You know, it's yeah. kind of an optional piece. Sure, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. If you're watching this live, by the way, if you've had some ideas of how you've kind of connected to the social emotional needs of your students and, you know, just just kind of provided for that relationship building and that social aspect, go ahead and pop those into the chat. And I'll be throwing those on the screen kind of little by little as we go. Um, Rachel, another thing that I noticed that um, you've done a lot with your class is bringing video into it and not necessarily live video like, you know, a Google Meet or a Zoom mm -hmm. or a Skype or anything like that, but doing asynchronous videos where students can record them. So mm -hmm. um, can you tell me why you decided to, to do that and what you like about it? Sure. So um, our district, the directive that we kind of got was that all learning was really to be asynchronous, realizing mm -hmm. that we just couldn't expect kids to come on and do uh, live lessons. So um, one of the examples, if you if you don't mind showing that again, Matt. Sure. Um, yeah. yeah I would say Flipgrid is probably the singular platform that I've been using for that sort of thing. So I will post in this case, this was for our, because I teach gym, physical education, and mm -hmm. we were actually right in the middle of a dance unit when this whole thing went down. So just, you know, keep it, keeping things light and fun. And maybe with a little pressure for my own children, we had just discovered TikTok. <laughs> so oh, wow. we, were, we were filling some time with learning TikTok dances. And so I got them to do this one with me. And that was our first uh, health enhancement is what we call it. Our first mm -hmm. gym assignment um, where, I mean, it was just my kids and me doing a silly dance. I pushed it out through Flipgrid, made it optional, you know, mm -hmm. said, Hey, I'd love for you guys. You know, you got to stay active while we're doing this quarantine business, but 
here's your first gym assignment. Master, you know, watch the video, master the skills, and like a thousand bonus points if you want to record yourself and post <laughs> a video, and two thousand yeah. bonus points if you can get some family members to do it with you. Nice. Um, yeah, so a lot of like I'm seeing Christie's comment about virtual spirit week. It's kind of like in that same vein, just mm -hmm. trying to keep things fun. And it was optional, and I had about fifty percent of my students post a video. Um, and a lot of them were with family members and siblings and pets, and it was just super fun to see. Yeah, yeah, that's so cool. Um, and yeah, I, and I really love the fact that you brought up the asynchronous aspect of it. Um, in fact, there's Yvonne again, asynchronous is excellent for families with children who have to share a device. It definitely is. Um, and I've also found that, you know, sometimes whenever we ask kids to meet on a synchronous video call, there's lots of, um, you know, there's, there's lots of frustration sometimes, like sometimes it doesn't fit very well with what's going on in the household. Something else may be going on. Um, it may be that the internet is kind of bogged down the device sharing the, you know, there's so much stuff mm -hmm. that can, and then my kids have even shown up to uh, video calls sometimes. And it's just like them and the teacher and two other students or something. And they're like, this is kind of awkward. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it avoids a little bit of that awkwardness, mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's all good stuff. And then um, there's more from your slides of having uh, parents and siblings and pets. So um, I wanted to touch on this a little bit. Is this just for the dance? Because I'm thinking that you could probably integrate this into lots of places and having the whole family involved could have lots of really good, um, really good benefits. Yeah, this, so what we're looking at was just for that one dance that I posted. That's and, cool though. And yeah. well, yeah, and it, I mean, some parents you could tell were, had been dr dragged in and weren't that thrilled about yep. participating, but you know, they did it for their kids and then others were having a blast. And so I think it was just nice to kind of build the camaraderie at home, maybe, I mean, who knows, but maybe help break some tensions that might be building, mm -hmm. you know, after days and days to, of togetherness. So. I mean, it, it was just fun. And, and I, I had a, I have office hours every day, which are my only kind of live uh, connection with the kids. And it's optional for them. They can join if they want to and, and when it works for them. But uh, I asked them the question of, would you want me to do another, uh, another TikTok dance with, with my girls? And they were all like, yeah, do another. So yeah. We'll try it. Yeah. yeah. That's so cool. Uh, here's another question. Um, do you assign things daily or all at once and allow them the freedom to respond complete. How do you work with that? And by the way, if you're watching this and you've got an answer to this, put it in the comments too. And we'd love to hear from you as well. Yeah, I, I'm actually really curious about all of you and how you're structuring things. Cause this is, this is just how my brain approached it. Right. Um, sure. And, and Matt, I think one of my last slides I have, I have, it, it addresses supporting families. Yes. So to answer the question from Krista, um, I, in my first week, which really spanned like a week and a half of a Monday through the following week's Wednesday, um, I put all the assignments out for, for ELA, social studies, and gym and said, work at your own pace, complete things as you want. Yeah. And, and that worked for a lot of the kids. But I also that week put out a parent survey and said, like, from your perspective, how are your kids doing? Are they, are they clear on assignments? Mm -hmm. And so some of that feedback was like, more of a daily structure would help my child. So then this week, um, or for this week, I put in both. I put in, here are the, all the assignments, and I put it in a table and um, said, you, work at your own pace. You, they're due Friday the 17th. And so they had seven or, yeah, about seven school days to work on them. But then underneath that, I said, and if your child ben would benefit from more support, here's kind of the day-by-day -day suggested flow. And a lot yeah. of parents really appreciated that. I think yeah. and kids too, because if when that wasn't there the first week, a lot of the feedback I was also getting was, I'm trying to give my kid a schedule, but he says he can do it whenever he wants. And so it was a way for the parents and me to yeah. be more of a team. Yeah. And isn't it interesting how it it's like what we said earlier, um, all of this remote learning really shines a light on some things that just didn't get as much attention before. And I think one of yeah. them definitely is executive functioning. Like, oh you know, God. how do we help students navigate their lives as students and their net lives outside of being students? And um, yeah, this is this is all really good stuff. Yeah, that was that was huge for my kids, definitely. And mm -hmm. and that um, 
the tables that I presented them with. I don't know if, are you able to project that one, Matt? It's maybe my second to last slide. Mm -hmm. um, I suggested to parents after that first week that they take that page of the, yeah, so this is one screenshot of it. Mm -hmm. And if you go to the next one, this was the self-paced option and the next one gives them the suggested sequence. So mm -hmm. this is all on one page of a Google Doc. So I said, hey, if you have a printer, feel free to print this out and put it somewhere visible. Cause I think mm -hmm. just, I mean, so much of what we're doing is digital and that's really hard for kids. I mean, it's hard, I think for all of us, unless we're mm -hmm. really, um, proficient in things like all the Google tools and how we keep ourselves organized. So I think it was helpful for kids and families to have something that they could print out and just like cross off once it was done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can we take just a second and look at these really quick and mm -hmm. get a feel for what's up here? Um, and we'll, we'll shout out Mrs. Byers history down here. It looks like this is her template. Yes. Um, so we've got the self paced is one. I'm going to flip through these. If you're watching this, I'm going to flip through these and then go back to the first one. So we have the self paced option is one. We have the suggested sequence is the next part of it. And then we have um, enrichment and self care stuff at the bottom of this. Mm -hmm. And so can you tell us just a little bit about what we're seeing on each one of these slides? And by the way, if you're watching this, I'm going to take a link to this slide presentation and I'm going to drop it in the chat so you can have access to all of, oh, I didn't ask Rachel for it. Rachel's oh, okay? totally fine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I knew yeah. you'd say yes. I just wanted we're to make sure that you would say yes. Yeah, so. Share it all. Yeah. 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 Okay. Go for it. Okay, so this, um, all three of these screenshots come from one page of a Google Doc. And I, Matt, I'm happy after this to share with you a link to that. I feel so fortunate that Mrs. Byers shared her template. And so I just riffed off of that. But essentially, um, like this Friday, we end our current learning. And then next Monday, the kids will get this Google Doc. And it's just a way to show them kind of as a one pager. Here are all your assignments for ELA Social Studies and Health Enhancement. With, they're just quick snapshots. What you see at the top there with the Google Classroom icon, that just indicates, and the kids know this now, that these are brief descriptions, but you have to go into Google Classroom to actually see the assignments. And so what we're looking at on this screen is the self-paced option. So for the kids who were like, oh yeah, this works great for me, Miss Marker, just show me all the work and give me a due date and I will get it done by that due date. Um, so that's what a lot of these kids are using is this grid here. And then if you go to the next page, this was in response to the parents and really the kids who I wasn't seeing a whole lot of action from um, to take each of those assignments that we were just looking at. And I just plugged them into different days. I mean, they don't have to go in this order, but you know, I want the kids to be reading every day. So some of that might be their choice reading. Some of that might be doing their ancient Egypt research. Uh, they get a common lit nonfiction article each week. So the reading will look different, but uh, in your own words was a social studies assignment just to practice uh, not plagiarizing. So how do we do research yeah. and then take notes in our own words? They're keeping a quarantine journal that's kind of ongoing. So I just, and I space that out throughout the week. And then there's a read aloud that, that I'm, where I'm reading to them and they're responding to different questions in a Google form. So, so this was just kind of the quick and dirty snapshot that they could refer to so that they don't lose track of things in Google classrooms. Cause I don't know about the rest of you, but our middle school kids are navigating not just my Google Classroom, but you know my colleagues for math and science, and then they have their electives teachers, and it's a lot. So what you were saying earlier, Matt, about the executive functioning, like it's a lot for kids, even the, the most organized kids, I think, to stay on top of. Yeah, so yeah. Just trying to support them. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I wanted to touch on something that you have in here um, on your slides over on Friday, you said that you had a read aloud. Mm -hmm. And you know, you see lots and lots of people doing read alouds over videos. And I think sometimes the the natural tendency is for people to think I'll do that if I have littles. Mm -hmm. But I keep seeing and tell me what you think about this. I keep seeing all of these articles and all this research about the benefits of read alouds whether they be like children's books that are related to themes that help even the bigger kids mm -hmm. or just reading with them, whatever the content is that, that they're wanting to study, um, that the read alouds a help you build connection to some extent with the students B helps with vocabulary building 
And then C just, you know, continues to reinforce the content. Like mm -hmm. there, there's all sorts of benefits for read alouds for really just about all different age of kids. Absolutely. I could not agree more. I, and I, I read those same articles and see that research too. And honestly, read aloud is my favorite part of the day. I don't do it. Hmm. I haven't done it a, the whole year. We did the global read aloud this year and we read front desk and it was incredible. It was just such, um, like you said, an amazing way to connect all of us around a shared story. And then the conversations that come out of that. And there were, we had incredible conversations about um, immigration and racism. And like you said, the vocabulary, we, our vocabulary wall on the board just started growing. And, you know, not to mention just the the human connectedness that comes when you share a story. So part of it's just a chance for them, especially in this time, for them to like close their eyes and not look at a screen and just hear someone read to them. They can follow along on a video if they want. But, um, but yeah, there was in the last three chapters that I posted, there was incredible figurative language. So that was one of my Google form questions was, here are four quotes from the book. Which one do you like the most and, and why? Why does it speak to you? Just opportunities for really open-ended, no one right answer sharing mm -hmm. about literature and, um, and just exposing them to stories. I'm reading a book right now that is new to me. I've never read it. It's, um, it's called Aru Shah and the End of Time. And it's about Hindu, it's, it's about, it's a girl pro protagonist, so a strong female mm -hmm. and the adventure, the hero story adventure that she goes on and it has a lot of Hindu mythology and it's one of the Rick Riordan imprint books. So I thought that was kind of an interesting spin on something that most of the kids were probably familiar with, but was a new book to all of them. Yeah, that's cool. That's really cool. All right. So in this video so far, we've talked about some of the social emotional connections and really starting off with that to get kids going. We've talked about some family stuff. So mm -hmm. I wanted to wrap up Rachel with sort of a rapid fire going through some of the assignments that you've given. This okay. is this is such good stuff. And so if you could tell us just a little bit, just real short about what the assignment is and then like what you like about it as a remote learning activity. Yeah. Um, let's, we'll, we'll put some of these up on the screen here. I'm just going to kind of sloppy flip through some of these real fast and get it ready for us. Um, so I can flip through however you'd like. And this is um, perfect. Yeah. Right oh. here is good. Um, mm -hmm. So real quick, something that combines, I think both social studies and ELA is just doing some current events. So my uh, slide deck was super simple. It was like, here are some online resources find a current event that is interesting to you and tell us about it. And it was a shared slide deck with all 60 kids. And so this was one example. Someone shared with us about COVID kindness and the really cool things that um, that were highlighted in this article that kids specifically are doing around the world. Mm -hmm. um, and if you go to the next one, I think it's animated there. Yeah, this. so another student landed on learning about how countries are being ranked on their happiness and just sharing some information. They're also citing their sources. They do it in like the bottom part of the Google slide, so you can't see it here, but just mm -hmm. practicing that for research skills. So that was mm -hmm. one piece. And I'm really, that I did the first week, I didn't do the second week, and I think I'll return to it for this next week. Mm -hmm. So that okay. was one. Uh-huh. And um, that's just keep been, moving. Yeah, you can keep moving. Okay. The next one I think was the quarantine journal. And this, uh, I'm so grateful to at Mrs. Pate history. She came up with this awesome template that uh, I borrowed. And really all it is, is an open-ended, their, their prompt is like right in your quarantine journal, two or three days a week or two, you know, two or three entries for this week, depending on how long the week was. And some of the kids wanted to do a handwritten journal. So there's an example of one, which is great. Kids are getting great experience learning how to just take pictures and upload and mm -hmm. um, give me notes in the margins. And then if you click through to the next one, the yeah. slide deck that I shared with them has uh, just blank pages that look like notebook paper and they're typing their entries. So it's just oh, been cool. really cool. Yeah. Like the student here had just lost her cat. Her cat had passed away. It was kind of sudden. Mm -hmm. So I checked in with her just in the comments on the side. And then this is her entry after that exchange where she was like, I'm doing better. 
And I love the last part. She says, I'm slowly building a stuffed animal army. We will take over the house. <laughs> so it's really cool to see like, hearing their voices come through. And this That's is going to be cute. ongoing. We're just going to yeah. keep this going. I wanted to mention just real fast about this. This really empowers kids to be like student historians, you know, because yeah. they really are living through history right now. This is stuff that they and their own kids, their own grandkids will potentially read about, will probably read about in history books. And so now they'll have their own record of that, that they can share with others in the future, which I think is so cool. It's so cool. I know that's how I've been framing this whole thing is you guys are living history. This is history yeah. in the mo making and your journal entries don't have to be anything profound. You mm -hmm. are going to love looking back on these even mm -hmm. in like two years, mm -hmm. let alone in 10 years. So I think yeah. it'll be special for them. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So we're doing some independent reading, which is really cool. Okay. So I'm huge on independent reading and uh, giving kids choice and what they read and love graphic novels, love comic strips, newspapers, magazines, it doesn't matter. But I was struggling with how, you know, because we're not together and I can't conference with them. I was like, how, how am I going to know that they're reading? And I did not want to do a reading log. So yeah. I just went to book snaps and, um, and I made a screencast showing them through an example that I made of what mm -hmm. a book snap is. We hadn't done any all year. I'd been wanting to, but I just hadn't found the right time. So did a couple, did a screencast, did an example. And then this is in Google drawings. I just made a template with lots of emojis on the side and like thought yeah. bubbles and different um, drawing features and showed them how they could grab their own and just set them free. And that's their assignment for this week. They just have to do one book snap to, um, to kind of capture some of their reading from this week. And they're mm -hmm. loving it. And one of, one of my kids said, can we do more than one? And like, that's the best response you can get, right? Is them yes, wanting to do more. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. That's great. That's great. Okay. And now we're back to supporting families. So, so we got some examples there of um, some different things that you could do in mm -hmm. a couple of different subject areas. Um, apparently Kelly is lighting our chat on fire with this idea <laughs> that I just threw up here. So I'm going to, I'm going to put it back up here. She says, I created a Google slide deck for students to share their good news. Totally inspired by John Krasinski's um, SGN is that share good news episodes. So great to see their sweet good news. This is optional for yeah. the students. And I mean, you know, even if you've got a good template or not, really all you've got to do is just take an online slide deck, share it with the students and make it so that anybody can edit the slides. And then they can go in and they can pop them in and add pictures and add videos and add all sorts of stuff. So um, I really like that idea. And then of course there was, you know, a whole bunch of stuff where people were loving that idea. So yeah. Um, yeah, she said she basically just created one slide of her own sharing some good news and then shared it on Google Classroom. It's that just that that general idea. So um, and then we also got lots of loves for the book snaps as well. Lots of love for the book snaps. So ah, ah. this has been such good stuff. Rachel, well, this has been fantastic. Thank well, you so much fine. for for doing this. Yeah, absolutely. If um, people want to get in touch with you and ask you further questions or see anything else, um, where's the best place for them to do that? Yeah, absolutely. I didn't put my Twitter handle in my little label there, but at Rachel Marker is my handle on Twitter. And I would love to connect with people there. And honestly, that's probably the best place. Um, follow me, mm -hmm. I'll follow you back and we can uh, DM or just have the conversation through tweets. Uh, yeah, and I would I would love to hear what all of you are doing too. So I'm going to follow everyone in this chat or in this whatever this is. And uh, yeah, yeah I, just, I feel so strongly that we're all that we're all better together. So I'm happy to share resources and uh, can't wait to learn from all of these folks and and other people out there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much. And of course, if you're watching this and you this was useful to you, this video does live on the Ditch That Textbook YouTube channel now. It's available immediately after we're done for uh, replay. So feel free to grab the link. And if you like the idea of these live videos, um, make sure that you subscribe to the Ditch That Textbook YouTube channel. We'll push out notifications whenever we're doing other ones. And of course, that's the best place to find any of those. So um, this has been fantastic. Rachel, one more time, thank you so much oh, for joining us. Thank you us. so much. Thanks for the opportunity. Good luck, everyone. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much for joining in this video and hopefully we'll see you in the next one. Take care.